recently I've been going back to go watch Dragon Ball Z in Japanese. I made a video saying that it's not exactly easy to watch Dragon Ball Z, but I really wanted to do it because one of the main reasons is because the dubs for Dragon Ball Z are infamously known for having line changes for certain characters that don't really correlate to who they are as a character. Like Goku's famous line of ally to good and nightmare to you. That doesn't exactly fit the character for Goku. He's not a superhero, but in that dub they portrayed him to be that way and I really wanted to experience what Goku actually is so I started watching the Japanese version, the sub, and so far I've been really enjoying it and I found a lot of aspects about the show that I'm reflecting on with, with age of, and time passing on of course and there are certain characters that I enjoy way more now than I did before. There are certain parts and certain arcs of the show that I'm enjoying way more than I ever did before. I'm having a blast re-watching the show because of nostalgic reasons of course and reliving these epic moments that I saw before when I was a kid and when I was younger. It's obviously really cool and I enjoy watching this happen right before my very eyes again. It's really cool. I, I'm really enjoying it. And I'm, you know, seeing the source material for the first time. This is the first time I'm actually ever doing this. I did it for Dragon Ball and I watched Dragon Ball Super in Japanese, but I never watched Dragon Ball Z. And now I'm reliving these moments with original voice actors that really paved the way for anime coming over to the West. So I'm really appreciating it. And as I reflect on certain characters and certain arcs and certain character aspects of certain other characters that we've seen before, I start reflecting on a couple of more characters that I didn't really know I would have. Currently where I'm at right now is the Cell arc, the, the android saga, whatever you want to call it. Cell is a really cool character. I really like Cell in a lot of different ways and it's mainly because he starts off as being super imposing, super intimidating, and really 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 creepy and I really enjoyed seeing that again because it starts up with a mystery. The mystery starts with Bulma figuring out that there's a time machine that looks exactly like Trunks's. There's an exact copy of Trunks's time machine somewhere out in the middle of the wilderness. Bulma, Trunks, and Gohan and then go over to where the time machine is and then they figure out that yeah this is a time machine from an entirely different timeline that's been blasted open from the inside out and something came out of it that was inside of an egg. Little did we know this would actually end up being Cell and just before we actually even get to see Cell Piccolo fuses back with Kami and they go and see him. All while this is happening a town called Ginger Town is getting attacked and people are disappearing out of nowhere. There are gunfires going off and, and it's, it's creepy it, like the suspense starts to build up and then you finally see see Cell. And he's just this giant bug creature that you don't really know what to think of for a second, but it's got he's got a long stinger, he's got these big wings, and he, he just looks intimidating. He looks imposing. He, he looks like a giant bug, and people you know fear bugs in real life. That's just the thing that it is, and I'm not judging you for it, but he was creepy. And then one of the first things that we see him do is actually absorb a person alive. And it's drawn out, it's you know suspenseful, and it's it's eerie, it's, in a lot of ways, it's super just, you know, scary, you know, and I imagine for certain kids seeing that for the first time, they might feel some sort of way, but I enjoy seeing that because it's an aspect of uh, Cell's character that I didn't really appreciate before when I was younger, because I never really thought anything about it because one of my first experiences with Dragon Ball ever was actually through the video games, so I never really got to see that scene for the first time, and the first thing I did was back when I was watching Dragon Ball Kai on Nicktoons, so that was when I was much older and to like my teenage years, so stuff like that wasn't really creepy to me but I really appreciate seeing that stuff now more than I did before and it's a lot of fun seeing more scenes like that because there are other scenes that happen later on where you see Cell attacking more and more people absorbing more people and there's this scene where massacring people in like an airport sort of area and there's a scene that just so desperately screams aliens in a couple of different ways and I, I enjoy that it's pretty suspenseful and Krilla ends up showing up and saves the day uh I really I just really like those scenes it's so interesting enjoyable seeing that with retrospective and now that I'm older I can appreciate stuff that I didn't really appreciate it before. That's basically the whole point that I've been saying for the video of why I've been re-watching the show and I really like it. But tell me why Cell also kind of fucking sucks at the same time. <laughs> Cell is a very interesting character in the sense that you start off with this character who is who is a some complete mystery. Then you end up finding out you know who he is, how he was created, what timeline he was from. They build him up as this suspenseful villain, and they have him absorbing people from different towns. He ends up showing up later on, and he pretty much obliterates Piccolo after fusing with Kami. And at that point, Piccolo is as strong as that he's ever been and then he absorbs android 17 with basically no harm no foul after a little scuffle with 16 but th this is where i start having problems with cell is immediately after he absorbs 17 and he gains his second form or quote semi-perfect form his character strips down to the bottom of the barrel where he becomes 
unfucking bearable and the main reason why I have a lot of problems with Cell is because they start off really fucking strong with him with this suspenseful mystery and he's super imposing and tying him with the androids of 17 and 18 is, you know, an interesting idea that they went ahead and did with or, or Kira, Kira Toriyama did. And then they have him in his second form and he doesn't look nearly as intimidating. He looks fucking stupid. <laughs> he has the big lips. They got rid of the tail. He looks like he's trying to imitate an actual realistic looking person. And I think that's the reason why Toriyama eventually ended up scrapping the design and went and did like the whole perfect form thing. There's actually an interview, I think it's in one of the consensus where I don't remember who was talking about it. I don't know if it's like an like an editor for Akira Toriyama. They were talking about like the design for a semi-perfect cell and he was insinuating or he was insisting that uh, Toriyama should change a cell's design as quickly as possible. I don't remember where I heard this from. I think I heard it from probably Geekdom, Geekdom 101. Not exactly sure. It's been a while since I've heard this information, honestly. But in the gap from when he is in a semi-perfect form immediately after he absorbed 17 to when he gains his perfect form after absorbing 18 is where he's basically unbearable. Not only does he look stupid, they start him off... Uh, because this is currently where I'm at with the Android Saga right now on Dragon Ball Z. They start him off and he's just blasting planets, not really doing anything. And he's just shouting off like 18, where are you? Where are you? Perfect form. Where are you? Blah, blah, blah. 18, 18, blah, blah, blah. And he's not really doing anything. He's just kind of blasting off planets trying to look for 18, right? Which, you know... It shows off his power, it shows off that he's not, you know, fucking around. He's genuinely trying to find 18 and gain his perfect form at all costs. Of course, the plan doesn't matter to him anyways, but it shows to what lengths he's being able to go to. If he has to draw her out in such a way, that doesn't matter to him, and that's fine, but he doesn't do anything other than that. Vegeta finally shows up, and as soon as Vegeta finally shows up, that's where his character starts to just, like, just, like nosedive downwards even further that he becomes so much more unbearable and he's like spouting off bullshit like uh this is impossible you're not vegeta at all blah 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 blah, blah. perfect form perfect form damn it all perfect form damn it all perfect form perfect form damn it all damn it all perfect form damn it all this isn't right blah 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 i'm stronger than you i'm perfect blah 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 i'm stronger than you bullshit bullshit perfect form hey, damn it all damn it all perfect form blah 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 he basically is just complaining and bitching and bitching and complaining and after a while this shit gets so fucking tiring and it's not fun to listen to. And I was thinking about this and I was wondering why I didn't really enjoy this as much as this next character I'm about to mention, Frieza. Frieza complained a lot too whenever someone was showing off way more power than he was expecting to see. And there's a reason why I enjoyed the complaints from Frieza more than I did from Cell. When Cell does it, it's because he's so... He, he's just basically being a giant fucking baby. He's being a literal giant bug baby. He's just constantly complaining and complaining and complaining and it just... It's not fun to listen to because with Frieza, the difference is that Frieza, for the entirety that we knew about this character and how he was built up, He's this super criminal villain, emperor of the universe, big a uh, big bad boss guy. He's built out to beat this super powerful dude that had never had any competition whatsoever. Not like nothing. Nothing existed in the universe to his mind that could ever oppose him in any sort of way. Besides that, the Super Saiyan, which is why he ended up destroying Planet Vegeta with all the Saiyans said for Nappa, Vegeta, Raditz, and he didn't even, he didn't know about this, but Goku, right? Those were the only Saiyans that had existed. As soon as we go to Planet Namek and Dragon Ball Z, that's where things start to change. Vegeta starts getting in the way, he starts showing off that he is getting more and more powerful, but nowhere near close to Frieza. And Frieza, you know, f continues on getting more powerful. And then we see a couple of people start showing up, like Piccolo, and he starts keeping up with the second form, right, with Frieza. And Frieza's so surprised that in the Mechian, someone of such a lower life form compared to who he is and the power that he actually holds was somehow able to gain such power and be able to keep up with him in the second form. Suddenly someone is able to oppose him and his power and we enjoy hearing him complain because he's getting his, his just desserts after massacring the entirety of planet Namek and then later on Goku ends up showing up and we know what happens there he ends up being way more impressive than Frieza was expecting and you know he does like the whole times 20 Kaioken Kamehameha stuff and you know that actually intimidates 
Frieza because at that point Frieza is using half of his full power, you know, 50%. And it actually hurts Frieza a little bit. And that's where it starts pissing him off even more. That somehow this Saiyan, right, this despicable, you know, race that he despises the most was somehow able to gain such power and, with, and, and such arrogance coming from Goku, the fact that he's just, you know, not treating Frieza with the respect that he has expected and that he was accustomed to the entire time of his existence. And the fact that this being, this sand monkey, was able to gain such amount of power to oppose Frieza, it pissed him off. And we hear him complain that's all of a sudden that this being exists. But the difference here, again, is that Frieza still has the upper edge. And then as soon as Goku turns into a Super Saiyan, Frieza's getting his just desserts again for massacring the entirety of the Namekians, for destroying dozens of planets, for causing mass genocide on multiple different planets, and just being a tyrannical emperor for the entire galaxy. Frieza is finally getting his just desserts, finally, by the thing that he had feared the most out of everything in the universe, which was a Super Saiyan. From a race that he thought he had completely wiped away, he's finally getting what he deserves. And hearing him complain is satisfying to hear because finally the villain is getting exactly what he deserves. In a sense, Cell is essentially getting the same treatment, but not in the exact way because of just a couple of things that just make it more not deserving for Cell's character. For him to be complaining like this. Yes, Cell is getting his just desserts. Yes, Cell, you know, we're getting payback against Cell because finally he's getting exactly what he deserves for killing all of those people in all of the different towns on planet Earth. But just him constantly spewing off the fact that he's this perfect being and this and that, and he's he's just constantly complaining, and unlike Frieza, he doesn't have any sort of secret power. He's not holding back. He's trying to go all out, but he's just being a gigantic fucking baby because he can't beat Vegeta. And then finally, when Vegeta decides that, yeah, he can go and get his perfect form, what does he do as soon as Trunks starts to step in and stop him from trying to find 18? He starts acting like a little fucking baby again and he's saying, Vegeta, your son's bullying me. Stop him from bullying me. He starts saying that Trunks is fucking bullying him, basically. And it's hilarious, but not in the way that they initially intended it to be. It just comes off in a certain way that just becomes unfucking bearable. I was watching this and I was starting to get a fucking headache because it wasn't fun and enjoyable anymore. And the problem with this is that Cell ends up getting the same attitude again later on after Gohan goes Super Saiyan 2. He starts complaining all over again that, you know, someone is now suddenly stronger than him. Give it the benefit of the doubt, it's sort of the same thing with what ends up happening after Goku goes Super Saiyan. Finally, someone is stronger than him and he's getting exactly what he deserves. And at that point, we should be feeling satisfied that he, that he is complaining that he isn't strong enough because now... Again, like like I said, he's getting exactly what he deserves. He's finally getting beaten. He's finally getting toyed around like how he's been toying around with everyone else. You know, he's he was being the gigantic dick bag and now he's getting exactly what needs to happen. And when that when it happens then, when it happens against Gohan, you know, afterwards when he gets Super Saiyan 2, that's okay. But when he's in his fucking second form, his semi-perfect form, he's when he's complaining there, it's not funny, it's not entertaining, it's annoying and cringy. I fucking hate listening to this, especially when in one episode, and I think it was episode 158, every other line he's saying, like, if only I had my perfect form, he starts a lot of screaming, damn it all, damn it all, damn it all, and then, like, stuff, more stuff about perfect form, and then finally convincing Vegeta to allow him to look for 18. After a while, it gets boring, it gets monotonous, mostly, it just becomes unbearable. So that's basically it. That's my opinions about Cell, a character who... I really like in a lot of different ways, and I think it, uh, there's a reason why he's so popular with Dragon Ball fans. And I don't, I'm not saying that he doesn't deserve the popularity. I think he definitely does. But when he is at his worst, that's when he's the most unbearable that he can be. And that's basically what I'm trying to say, is that there are certain parts in his character, at certain moments in the show, that could have been handled better. But what can you do? That's just how it is. So yeah, that's the end of the video. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Leave a comment down below. I'll see you guys next one. Have a fantastic day. I'm out. Peace.